My name is Gianluca Zanna. I was an Italian by birth and I became an American by choice. Our lives and freedoms are in danger. This is not a dream. If you're listening to this broadcast, you are the resistance. Welcome to Love, Guns and Freedom. Here we go, guys and girls. Another Sunday, another show. You're listening to Love, Guns and Freedom with Luca Zanna on K Talks 13:40 a.m. and also 104.1 FM. Okay, um, what can I say? Last Sunday was kind of interesting because every time I come here on the air, I may have a topic. Sometimes I have different topics, but I always try to bring you something that I believe is important. I have one hour in front of me, and uh, you know, I used to have three hours show. Uh, at the beginning of this, a uh, few months ago, I said, you know, too much. I have too many things I'm doing in my personal life. I cannot do it. But I want to keep these shows going for the simple reason because I really believe these minutes, this hour I have with me, it's uh, an opportunity to share information that normally on the airwaves or it's not really easy to find, I must tell you. I mean, at least for the tri-state area where I am, I don't know any other station that allows the such information getting out. So I take this as, an, as, a, as a responsibility, also as a duty. I, I really want to bring out some information that I think it's important, it's vital for the present and future of our nation and humanity in general. I'm in America, but I believe what's happening to us, it's happening pretty much everywhere around the world. Of course, I'm trying to fight here, and I believe if we can lead the fight with education on the threats that we are facing here in America, hopefully our brothers and sisters around the world, we can, they can learn from each other, we can learn from each other, we can fight back. So now, talking about information, uh, one of the reasons really I am grateful to this show since I started it, almost five years ago at this point, I guess, I can't believe it. It is because uh, I had the chance to learn so much uh, about many topics, about many things that I had no idea. And uh, don't get me wrong, I do, I take time to do my researches. I don't want to have uh, on the show just everything, just because uh, it can be controversial or just because it uh, can be something, I don't know, that maybe uh, is good for the show. No, I, my goal is not to be controversial. My goal is to, to find solutions and more important, to learn the truth, even when the truth can hurt. Now, I had on my show many times, and I also am very grateful because uh, this gentleman I'm going to bring back right now in a few minutes is a man that uh, not only we stood the ground together at the Bundys, during what the media used to call the standoff, I call them the stand for our freedom. And by the way, we know now that the government, we have proved through the courts that the government abused their power, his power. And uh, we were there peacefully standing, me and him. And by the way, this man is a senior man and uh, is amazing, uh, bleeding. He fell off the ground, the ground, and still was there, facing uh, the barrel of of, uh, of uh, these uh, federal agents pointing rifles at us, and we were there together. We stood as Americans together. But at the same time, beside that, what I'm really grateful to this man, the opportunity to know many topics that maybe I heard before a little bit, but he, gave, he took the time and dedication to try to keep uh, uh, educating, or at least sharing this information with me, about something that I had no idea till a few years ago. And the topic that I already talked to you a few times, I had many guests at this point since I learned all this, is targeted individuals. And people may say, you know what, really, why is so important? You know, we had to worry about the economy, we had to worry about immigration, we had to worry about uh, what's going on with civil war. I understand, it's all very important. But think about it for a moment. Think if it's really true. If there is a technology out there that can control your thoughts, and more important, your behavior, you see how important and cardinal is. They can control your brain, they can control your actions, they can control the world. 
and all these things coming falling apart, like you know, immigration and economy, taxation and corruption, and people still taking it, they're taking it without even trying to, you know, I don't want to say the world revolt, but say hey, stop. Guess what? Maybe there is a reason why this technology is so important to learn about it and uh, to expose it and to find out that it's been already experimented on many people the last uh, probably few decades. And now maybe they're using it on mass scale. So I want to bring back this topic today. And we will talk also about some news because it's very all connected, in my opinion. So let me bring the gentleman that uh, I've been talking about. His name is Ken. Ken wrote from Michigan. And I call him a brother in freedom. Ken, are you there? Yes, I'm here, Luca. Thank you. Thank you, my friend. You know, as I said, I really mean it. Uh, this has been a journey for me, uh, learning all these things, uh, and a lot of information that uh, I still learn every day. But when it comes down to target individuals, if it wasn't for you, probably I would have had a few more months or years maybe, or maybe who knows, never. So I, I appreciate that you woke me up on that one. And also to bring me a lot of opportunities with great guests that we had. You know, I had uh, Karen Stewart on the show, thanks to you and your help. And also, of course, uh, William Beeney, uh, that they, by the way, they are two the most probably uh, spread out on the internet interviews. They got more than 60,000 views on YouTube on my little channel. So I appreciate it. I want to give you the floor, Kenny. Anything you want to talk today about? Anything? Well, we, we can talk about the target individuals, then I'll get it, because we got so much corruption, but I do feel that this is the most important one, uh, Luca, because if we don't bring this under control, that's what they're going to control the whole world with, not just a few people. And they're doing it on a lot of people. I think most people are targeted, maybe not to the extent that uh, that some of the target individuals are, because some of them get microwave burns. And they, they, they send frequencies to the heart to make the heart. They think they're dying and all, and all this kind of stuff. But, if you go back to that in the 60s, the Russian embassy, they were hitting our embassy with this technology. And it's all, it's mostly microwave technology. And they, and our government called it the woodpecker. But yet they did not tell any one of any of the people working in there, and these are Americans, didn't tell them anything. They went ahead and experimented on what they knew Russia was doing it or whoever was doing it. I don't know, maybe it was our government doing it and blaming on Russia. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I know it was happening, and people were getting heart problems, dizzy, cancer. Before this was over, a lot of them died with cancer, but yet the government kept experimenting on them. Then not, not too long ago, about a year or so ago, the same thing happened that happened in Russia and Cuba. Yeah. And we're talking about the 60s all the way up to 2018. And then not only did that. They said they got heart, they had heart problems, dizzy, burning feelings, you know, you know, all kinds of stuff. Now it actually happened in China to our embassy. Wow! So what is going on that our government is not willing to bring out and tell us? Yeah, I can tell you exactly what it is, Luca, because I get Luca, and they're really stepping this up. Because I've been very active in this for quite a few years now, and I get people call me all the time, and they're. And they're new, and they're, they're new to this, and they want to know what. What first thing they said, what can you do? For, what can you do to help her? I can't do anything to help you. I can tell you that the first thing is watch your money, because they want to make sure that they bankrupt you so you can't fight them back. Wow. Then they want to isolate you and get you away from any support that you got. Yeah. So I mean, this this is terrible. What our government is doing to the we the people. No, it's true. I tell you, so, I, and I've been talking to several people since uh, you, you know we talk about this with you, and there is always a pattern. And don't get, don't get me wrong. I want to be fair here. Not just because everybody. Uh, I have a lot of calls, a lot of emails uh, now, especially after the shows I, I put out. I, I'm not saying that everybody just because there's some symptoms means that is a target individual. Some people may have some real uh, physical conditions or mental conditions or some things that they're not target individuals. So not everybody is a target individual. Sometimes I realize that there were people out there that like to hide a little bit behind uh, this idea that they are target individuals. But the reality is target individual is a reality. And sometimes it's sad when I see also people that they try almost uh, to compromise the true 
target individuals. And sometimes they may just do it in, innocently just because they feel like they need some compassion, they need some friendship, or they need some attention. And I start to believe now there is also a counter-movement maybe from the same people behind the technology that is using against target individuals to discredit the target individuals. Because there have been out there some people really that they've been doing a big discredit, in my opinion, about that. So let's be fair here. You know, I, I gave the microphone to almost everybody who wants to come here. But I always ask, uh, first of all, I'm not an investigative reporter. I don't have the resources to investigate the background of everybody. So I always say, whatever you say, uh, it's your opinion. But sometimes I also realize that some people, I really uh, believe that they abuse a little bit the word, the target individuals. Don't you have any type of experience with people like that, um, Kenny? Yeah, yes, Luca. Okay. But you got to remember, Luca, paranoid schizophrenic comes before the age of 21. Mm -hmm. After the age of 21, I've never heard of anybody being a paranoid schizophrenic. Mm -hmm. But like I've said in the past, this is like walking through a minefield. you got people that are paranoid schizophrenic in our group. Absolutely. you got people that, that wasn't paranoid schizophrenic, but they are now because they drove them that way. Yeah. Then you got the people that are, that are truly... Target individuals, then you got the government, they put a lot of their, what we, they call them perps, mm. you know, in, into our community. Mm. So it's like walking through a minefield trying to figure out which one is and which one is not. Yeah. But if you got a loved one and they're 40 years old and 55 years old and all of a sudden they get diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenic, well, it can't be true because they don't have that after the age of 21. Mm -hmm. the, that's the psychiatrists, how they make their money. Yeah. See, like when you go to a psychiatrist and say, I'm hearing voices, it's pretty obvious. I, I wouldn't have to tell you what they'll do to you. I mean, everybody knows then you're going to go into a mental ward. They're going to start shooting you up with drugs, getting you electric shock. Wow. Going, that's when they're going to really do their experiment on you. But one thing but for yes, sure. We do have that, we do have that problem. Yeah, I ahead. mean, no, the point is that I'm not a doctor. You know, I don't have any medical degree, but I have my opinions. And I look at statistics. Uh, I... Um, there is a part of science that has the, let's say, the hubris, the, the arrogance to, to claim that they can somehow cure your brain or cure your behavior with medication. I think it's such a pile of, uh, of, of dangerous stuff, my opinion, uh, because I noticed that uh, most uh, of this medication, this is my opinion, the FDA can kiss my ass, seriously, because sometimes you got to watch what you say. Now you give a medical opinion, Mr. Zana. No, I'm not giving any medical opinion. I'm giving you my opinion. I'm still entitled. This is still America, okay? So I really believe that uh, what di this type of uh, medications or, uh, let's say, legal drugs to influence or to modify or to improve your behavior, they're probably the one of the most dangerous things to a free human being because look now and most of these drugs, they're supposed to make you feel better. Zoloft, you know, Patzel, or whatever they are, you know, there's so much stuff. Uh, they are, have one all things in common when you go back to violence or to suicidal violence or to homicidal violence. Look at all these mass shootings. Um, probably the majority of these shooters, I already had a short, we're talking about the names also. They have one thing in common, these drugs. So if this type of medication is being approved by the this, this uh, corrupted agency, in my opinion, called the FDA, that they are so concerned about our health, and I've been sarcastic here, you know, they could not even let me go through uh, 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 six bottles of extract of olive leaf uh, from Italy because they are concerned about that for my health. But at the same time, they approve this medication that in every disclaimers, you know that they say, by the way, you're going to get suicidal, you're going to get homicidal, you're going to get crazy. I mean, they write that stuff there. And this is okay. It's legal. So I really believe that uh, these doctors called psychiatric, uh, and by the way, many of them, they may try to think they're doing the right thing because they've been following the pattern and the model and the education from the same, I, let's say, organizations who teach to the teachers, who teach to the, uh, to the doctors. 
And who, are, who, are, who is behind this organization? The same foundation controlled by the bankers. I mean, let's not forget that the education, uh, the, the foundation that started to teach the teachers was behind uh, Rockefeller Foundation. And so all this medical foundation, that who, who creates the curriculum for each type of faculties, these foundations, these professors, the professors are funded by whom? The same bankers. So they want to keep the system going, in my opinion, because uh, let's go back to depression or things like that, in my humble opinion. Uh, Many of these medications would be very much useless if you have uh, some good diet, if you have some good uh, lifestyle, and uh, you know, and some maybe interaction with other human beings to try to help you out. What do you think, uh, Kenya? Am I crazy? Or maybe we should go get all these pills now, just because the doctor tells them. No, no, I think you're absolutely right, Luca. If you go back, Luca, and study the 1900s, yes, we had mentally ill people, but not near. That's what we got today. You know, you go to the doctor and tell him you ain't feeling good, here's your pill. Oh, the doctor, that makes me kind of droggy and I can't sleep. Well, here's another pill. Mm -hmm. Oh, in the morning, doc, I wake up and I, I can't get going. Oh, here's your one to get you going in the morning. So take, so pretty soon they got you on all kinds of drugs. And when they advertise them on TV, look, it takes them five minutes to almost tell you all the bad side effects to them. Yeah. So, no, I, I think I'll pass on all those. Yeah. I've never took a drug for being mentally ill in my life, and I don't plan on taking one. I, I so, have a question, Kenny. Yeah, it, it is big money. Person, a personal question, Kenny. When, when did you start to you know, realize that something was uh, not right with your situation? You know, before even you knew there was uh, a targeted individual uh, situation, did you ever say... Actually, back in the... Yeah, when was Back that? Back in the 70s, Luca. Wow. Back in the 70s. And, and before you were aware of all this information, there was no Internet. I mean, I, I'm impressed how even you found out all this information because the Internet is just a recent thing, you know, the last 30 years probably. But uh, I don't even think there was so much information about target individuals still probably 20, 20, 10 years ago. I don't know. But my point is, at the beginning, did you ever say, okay, maybe I need to go to a doctor, maybe... Um, since you didn't know there was a target individual situation, maybe you thought something maybe wasn't right with your brain. Maybe I need some help. Did you ever go to a doctor to ask for help? No, never. Not for this, Lucas. When I started noticing, Lucas, when they did, they did the game stalking. Mm -hmm. Now, that's been going on for a long time, even before the Internet. That's where they game stalk you, trying to put fear in you. Because any time you got fear, they, it's easier to control you. And that's what I try to tell all the target individuals. Mm -hmm. You got fear, they try, it makes it easier for them to, so I don't, I don't let them put any fear in me. I mean, look at how many people, Luca, they're killing now. I own government. I mean, I got a friend, you may know who he was, he was doing the live stream down there in, in Vegas, John Lamb. Mm -hmm. He was doing it twice a day live streaming. Yeah. Well, they thought when, when Vegas, when the bunnies got found, you know, they dropped all the charges on him. Yeah. And all that, they thought he'd go back home to, He's an honest guy that he'd go back to his family. Mm -hmm. He didn't do that. He went to Waco and started bringing that up. Yeah. And he had a very, very mysteriously semi-accident and almost, I mean, it took him 45 minutes to cut him out of the truck. Wow. So he made it. I just went up to see him last week. I met a friend, another friend went up there to see him. And, he, and actually, Luca, he's doing very well. But it, he's telling me stuff that... On this accident, at first they didn't believe me when I was trying to tell them, here's yeah. how they stage them, here's how they do it. But it come back that they got the black box out of his truck. Uh -huh. They had to go to court to get it. A guy named uh, Roger, an attorney, got it. They had, This truck was stopped with this brakes on, and actually John pushed that truck probably 15 feet. And, and the reason we know it's a truck skid marks because it was a dually. Now they went out there after... After they knew the attorneys went and took pictures of it, they went out there on the highway and actually took the skid marks off the highway. I've never heard of a state or a city or anybody doing that. But yet, right up the road, two weeks before John got in his accident, they had a death up there, and the skid marks are still on the pavement. Wow. So there's, wow. there's, there's a lot of stuff that's not making any sense. No, but look at Jim uh, Jim Garden, the guy that's up there, he's pushing the... He's pushing row scene sections in a way about they want they want the stuff for the Congress. His nephew just got killed. 
So they use, they use car accidents for a lot of things. So yeah, and also you know I mean, what, we, we could get it. Yeah, car accidents, and also let's not forget uh, there was a reporter I think in Los Angeles a few years ago. I think it was for. Uh, uh, I forgot the name of the newspaper. It was a kind of a music paper. Anyway, it was investig- this, this was during the Obama, and his car completely went crazy, and they found out that um, uh, he, his car, you know, now especially the new cars with the technology, the computers, he was hijacked. I mean, it was completely uh, a car that was taken over by a hacker. I mean, but before even we go yeah. to there... Let's not forget that, uh, I mean, many, how many people died mysteriously the last few years? Uh, even just not that far. I mean, look about uh, Braveheart. I mean, out of the blue, he's the day after, the day before he's supposed to go out there in a public press conference, uh, try to expose Obama's secrets. The night before, out of the blue, die of a heart attack. I mean, that's serious. They can put, make up this stuff. I mean, uh, no even get me going with Hillary Clinton, all the people that around her died just because uh, somehow they had something to do to interfering with her situation or had evidence against her. This is so bad. The technology is out there. And, of course, there is uh, a lot of levels of technology from the average uh, things that could be, um, you know, look at, just kill you. You know, knock you down, and then, you know, you die with two bullets in the back of your head, and they say, oh, by the way, suicide, or just even more sophisticated, like the heart attack. I mean, the heart attack gun was something that it was on the, you can watch it on YouTube in this uh, congressional investigation from the 70s. That's old stuff. Think what they can do now. Yeah, you, I mean, you know, Luke, they talk, I tell people, they say, oh, we know about the heart attack gun. No, that was in the 40s, in the 50s. They don't use a heart attack gun. Uh-huh. They use frequencies, and they can literally stop somebody's heart or explode their heart, and then a doctor say the person had a massive heart attack. Yeah. Now, you're talking about the guy that was, the, the car got hijacked. That was a brand-new Mercedes. Yeah. And I can't re- for the life of me, I'm getting older now. I'm 74, Luca. Wow. I can't remember his name. Me neither. But actually, no, the motor too. came out of the yeah. car. Wow. The motor came out of the car and went 100-something feet ahead of it. Oh, my gosh. You know, and you, yeah, they got they they. This is one of their favorite deals is car action because they think that's harder to prove. Yeah. So no, it's it's happening. I mean, we're, we're dealing with some evil people. Exactly, it's happening. And the point, you know, at this point, uh, all I ask for people out there that may be questioning or I, I like question. I mean, if you have questions, that's great. But I don't like when people laugh and they think, uh, okay, just a bunch of nuts. Because uh, guys. I wish it wasn't true. I really wa- I wish that all these things that we can talk about other stuff, because all I say, the evidence is out there. Uh, we talk about with several of your guests. I had great guests, especially the gentleman from New York. I forgot his name. My brain is really getting weird lately. But anyway, uh, you know, your friend from Buffalo, New York. Um, I had him on the yes, show. Yes, Dave Francisco. Yeah, I mean, he, he, all we talk about is a patent. Uh, um, technology, exposing the technology, talking about the evidence that this technology is real. We went through numbers. People can find out. You know, like when, like when we talk about geoengineering, where the modification, what they can do. Uh, this is patents that are old since the 60s, the, the 70s. I mean, this is stuff is amazing. It's all out there. And why am I really saying, wow, we have to really educate ourselves on this one because I'm very concerned. Look around now, the average American. I was watching, for example, the other day, Mark Dice. At the, you know, Mark Dice is a, a kind of interesting guy from San Diego. And he's very smart, yeah. he writes books, and he goes out there with his video camera, and he's trying to talk to people, and try to do some sort of interesting journalism, you know, expose the average walking man or woman to reality or what have we have become. And I was watching this video, I may play it, by the way, in a little bit, and uh, he's asking questions about uh, the 4th of July. What do we celebrate at the 4th of July? I mean, I thought it was a joke. I thought it was, okay, this is a bunch of actors or whatever. They want to be funny. No, this is, was real. These people, and they are grown-up people. They are not just a, a bunch of, of, of kids, okay? From different backgrounds, different races. doesn't matter. They, I don't know if there was anybody really that was able to articulate two words in English to express, uh, to is more important, to answer to the simple question. What do we celebrate? Why do we celebrate the 4th of July? I mean, this is the average now American. And people may say, oh, this is just California. Guess what? California is still part of the 50 states. And probably if we go to New York, I may say pretty similar. 
And I wouldn't be surprised if I go to Phoenix. So my point is, between different factors now, we call public re-education, I call it, then the indoctrination that you have, you know, through the media, and then, of course, uh, look around the magic box that is not nothing else but an instrument of control, the television, reconditioning your brain. We know that. Uh, there is a patent about that. And then, of course, different chemicals from all these medications and fluoride in the water and uh, corn syrup and other terrible things. And why not, at the end, maybe some technology to really make you dumb? We have a new uh, species a new generation of drones. They are no more human beings, free-thinking human beings. They are like walking zombies. And that, for me, would be the ideal goal of every tyranny, of every tyrant, to have a new type of individual that is not an individual anymore, is part of, of, a, of a herd that it doesn't even know the basics. It doesn't care. That's the scary thing. Don't you think we are almost at this level? Yeah, you know, yes, look, we are. It's it's a it's a very sad state that we've come to. We've got people like yourself that come from other countries that had to come over here legal and learn our learn our way of life and all that. And you know more about our history than the than some of us that were born and raised here for seventy years. It's it's kind of sad to me. You're talking about Dave Bransko out of New York. Yeah, well, Bransko. He got all his information from Ted Gunderson. So people should go. Google up Ted Gunderson. Yeah. He was the head of the FBI back in the 70s. Yeah. Had 700 men working under him. Wow. And he always bragged because he had a or $12 million budget. Wow. And before it was over, because he was telling Dave how all how this stuff worked, Jeez. they started targeting this man, even though he knew him, but he could not, he didn't have no way of blocking. You cannot block him. Now, he was head of the FBI, and he knew all about it. And he talked about it, but they put him on this program. Yeah. So if people want to Google up Ted Gunderson, the head of the FBI back in the 70s, and this, he's all over the Internet. This guy was telling you what they were doing. All you have to do is listen to him. If you don't want to believe me, you, you can talk to your guys in the head of the FBI. It's, we know how corrupt they are. We're dealing with them right now. Exactly. You know, I'm, glad, ahead, I'm glad you brought them up because, you know, sometimes people may say, you know what, look at Zanna, uh, go back to Italy. We don't believe you. Fine. Uh, then, you know, Kenny, you know, time to retire, whatever. Fine. Uh, but then when you start to say, okay, especially for people on the right, okay, people that consider, consider themselves conservative. But when they start to touch things like that, they look at you like you're crazy. If you believe really that uh, a man like Ted Ganderson, a man who dedicated all his life to public service. What really the FBI is supposed to be. I mean, this guy, he was standing for the truth. It wasn't uh, covering up government uh, uh, abuse of powers. It was, was some, many times, was pointed out about government, at least the corrupted government. He spent all these years. It was even just a, jet, a regular agent. You know, this guy was a position of, of management, hyper management. He was a director. And uh, at the end of his career, you see how public is coming with all this information. He doesn't just talk about targeting individuals. He starts to talk also about sex trafficking. He starts to talk about geoengineering, chemtrails. I mean, all these things that normally they call us crazy. And now, unfortunately, we see more and more how truth they are. Out of the blue, this man, of course, die of cancer. Listen, could be possible. Was an older guy? Yes. But at the same time, there is a lot of evidence that the man, too, was pointed out. It wasn't just a regular cancer. By the way, just to let you know, people out there, they have a way to give cancer. They tried to give cancer to Fidel Castro 40 years ago. There is the technology that they can give you cancer virus on demand. So I wouldn't be surprised that maybe, and I'm saying, of course, I have no all the proofs, but I said I wouldn't be surprised that Tank Anderson was killed just because of what he was saying and all the information he was sharing. Uh, don't you think it would be very possible, Kenny? Oh, absolutely, I think. He had the brain tumor at once, and everybody thought he died with it. But he told me it was, I think, colon cancer is what. Yeah. The last time I talked to him, he, he was a great guy. He was going to go to Washington with us and testify in front of the Bioethics Committee. Wow. But then I, uh, about a week before he got so bad, then about a week later, I think he, he was dead. Well, I wouldn't be surprised. He, 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 was a great friend. he was a great friend of mine. Cause wow. He told us what they were doing, how they were doing it. But yet he couldn't even block it when they were doing it to him. 
Wow. That just shows you how, how really bad it is. I, I wish I had a chance to talk to him. You know, I have a lot of people that uh, I'm very pleased and grateful I had a chance to talk, like Jim Mars and, of course, William Beanie and uh, Mr. Stu Mrs. Stewart and other people that they've really been uh, important to expose all these things. But I w Ganderson was one of the person I, I wish I had. And it's sad. You know, sometimes we always think or we take for granted, oh, I'm here today, maybe next week we're going to do it. Guess what? Maybe tomorrow is not going to happen anyway. Don't be cocky. Don't be arrogant. Because we don't know really what's happening here. Every hour is a precious hour. Every day is a precious day. Let me play one second this little segment from Mark, uh, Mark Dice. Because I think it's very important. Because sometimes words cannot express enough. Especially with my English. People think, okay, what are you talking about? Look, maybe um, Mark Dice is just a joker. No, he's not a joker. He's, I think he's doing a great job to inf inform us. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. What is the purpose of Fourth of July stay there, Katie, celebrations? Stay there. I'm yeah. gonna turn it to the guy in the USA shirt. Sure. Fireworks. A little more specific. <laughs> a little more specific. Celebrating our independence. There we go. A little more specific still. Independence Day. From a country. Uh, step in here at any time. Uh, which country was that? History was not my subject. I slept through that class. And happy Fourth of July. Thank you. Happy Fourth to you guys. When Jesse Ventura, John Wilkes Booth, and the other founding fathers signed the Declaration of Independence, what year was that? 1970, sorry, 1870 something, but I don't remember the specific year. What's the purpose of Fourth of July weekend? I know, celebrate our independence. A little more specifically, please. I, I really don't know. I, I, I don't know. I mean, that's that's all I know. Yeah, I'm revoking your celebration. <laughs> You're no longer allowed to celebrate. <laughs> celebration canceled. Name two of the founding fathers of the United States. Oh, man, you had to start there, huh? Washington. Hey, I'd ask him, not you. Oh. Okay, name one more. George and uh, Lincoln. No. Hey, pipe right. down over there. <laughs> it was supposed to be... You're not putting this one on the We're going to have to deport you. <laughs> yeah. You don't deserve to be in America. Yeah. Get out of our country. <laughs> what year did the Declaration of Independence get signed? <laughs> it was you. You first. Oh, s***. Watch your mouth. I'm sorry. Um, I don't remember, honestly. Um... I 1875. Okay, I had to stop. Uh, Kenny, that hurts just listening to me. Are you there? Yeah, I'm here. I, don't I know couldn't you... hear it, Luke. Okay, okay. I, I, was, okay. I, I was playing this part of Mark Dice's uh, little video uh, of these people. And I tell you, you know, people may say, well, maybe just la li lighten it up, Luke. Just laugh it up. It's just funny. No, this is not funny. I tell you why. Because sometimes maybe... People don't visualize enough. Maybe I'm, I'm too empath. I don't know. Maybe I, I look at reality. I look at history. I look at history like it's a present. Because maybe my history, my former country, I still smell the blood. Okay? Because it wasn't that far ago that my grandfather told me these stories. Or people fighting to try to defend their lives. Sometimes even with empty hands. Or losing their homes. Or losing everything they had. So that's why probably I still look at this like a reality. Even it happened 1770 something, as these people may not even think when. 1776, 1775. Let's start from there. 1775, you know, in April, when the first bullet started to fly, people decided, took a, took a side. They knew that they were going to lose everything, even their lives eventually. But they decided to stand for freedom to stand for their dignity of free human beings, in this case, of free Americans. And people don't understand, you know, maybe people, because they think, oh, after all, you know, they were British people, they were all dressed in red like marionettes, and this is like a movie. No, this is real. Violence was uh, cruel. We can get sometimes a little glance at these videos or movies, like, you know, The Patriot or whatever, you know, different movies that you can watch there, um, like with Mel Gibson. But the point is that was even harsher. Family ripped apart, their homes burned, losing their limbs, losing their eyes, losing their lives, losing their wealth, everything they had. All this why, the few generations after, 
these people don't even know what happened. They cannot even remember a date. They cannot even remember why. This is for me the, the saddest thing I can say. Because I tell you, who controls history, who controls the information, controls also our wills, controls our minds. That's why another form of mind control. These people, they are not just dumb or stupid because they are stupid and they chose to be stupid. Yes, don't get me wrong, some of them they like it, but also it's because created a system that stupid is cool. Look at the average rock star, pop star, or whatever, you know, indoctrination you get from the media or from it, even the school system. You, you, they don't like you when you know so much. You don't like when you ask questions. You look like stupid, like a nerd. I'm talking about the basics now. So this is part of the plan how to control humanity, in my opinion. This public school system is supposed to be really, my opinion, abolished. The way it is, is just to make people stupid. I mean, look all the billions and trillions we spent in public education. And these people are coming out, out of the average public American school. They cannot even know the basics. What we fought for our independence. What we, who was our enemy? When happened? Did right. They, I mean, tell me. Tell me what you think. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm just losing my mind. What do you think, Kenny? No, you're absolutely right, Luca, because we as Americans have become the enemy of our own government. And, you know, I'm getting tired of hearing people say, oh, the rank and file, the FBI, they're good people. We just got a few bad ones on top. No, we got a few bad ones on top, and we got a whole lot down the rank and file. Because if you go back up in the Art Burns argument when they killed the boy Fennecum, that was the FBI that was behind all that, Luca. So I get tired of hearing people saying the FBI, the rank and file, they're good. No, they're not. If you if you remember in the Boston bombing, one of the Zakara brothers' friends, the FBI went down there and talked to him. He told his friends, they're going to kill me. He said, oh, no, you're in America. They don't do that. What happened? They said he attacked them or something, and they had to kill him. Yeah, that's no, true. So our FBI, the rank and file, they're, no, they're, we're enemies of our country. But, Luke, but at the same time, I want to be fair, too. I'm very sorry too. to say that, but we are. But look, once I agree, but there's also one point. There's also some good people out there. Ted Gunderson was an FBI agent. I was an FBI director, and I'm sure he had, the, I, under him, many other FBI agents that they meant well, and they wanted to really work for the American people. Probably the problem that I see now, if they smell you, that you are a good one, they almost like try to catch you off. I mean, I know many good cops that they were trying to be decent peace officers and uh, reminding themselves that they took an oath to uphold the Constitution. And I was talking to them. Some of them, they had to leave the agency. They had to relocate because the moment that they start to speak the truth and start to expose corruption or start to expose, uh, you know, abuses, they're going to get completely ostracized. They're going to be completely like uh, mobbed by the rest of their group. And some of them, they say, by the way, I'm never going to enforce the law or whatever type of laws or order to confiscate Americans' guns. The moment that their the chief of police listened to that type of uh, uh, thinking, guess what? This person is going to be demoted. This person is going to say, you know what, we're going to make your life difficult. But I still believe out there, there are maybe not as many as we need, but there are some good people. The problem is, uh, do they have a chance to speak up? Do they have a chance to do anything? I mean, look at the FBI. All the top ranks, this Mueller, this Comey, I mean, all these people that are the top dogs, they are the most corrupted bastard that we know now. I don't care which party you are. The evidence is there. How do you think would feel a regular FBI agent, regular, you know, foot soldier, when you have your boss that is number one devil and you try to do your job? They're going to cut your legs so fast. What do you think? What would you do if you were an FBI agent? Right. Exactly. Well, it, when you get policemen, Dr. I forget what the one's name was in uh, Los Angeles a few years back. He was doing something. He said, don't put me on that harassment program. Well, they they, they end up burning him to death up front of Big Bear. You might remember that when they check. They, they damn near shut the whole state of California down over one cop that they said went rogue. Mm -hmm. He didn't go rogue. They were using his technology on him. Yeah. And then they burned him down. He went up to Big Bear to somebody's cottage or a winter home, whatever you want to call it, and they burnt the thing all the way down. But it was amazing. They found his wallet and knew who he was and after, they, after they burnt the place to the ground. Yeah. It, you know, the stuff they tell us, Luca, and people say, 
Yeah, well, they found his wallet. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. like they found the passport to 9 11. <laughs> you know, you know I, talking about that, you know, and I don't want to laugh, this is serious stuff, but it's almost unbelievable. Who writes that stuff? Well, you got to laugh or you cry. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, think about who writes that stuff. In 9-11, you have a building completely vaporized. You have uh, these uh, crumbles. I mean, the steel completely melted. And, uh, you know, everything is burning, everything destroyed. There is everything powders. I mean, really, like, uh, completely forget about demolition. This was like uh, disintegration out, out of a space movie. Uh, guess what? But among all this fire... fire the FBI agent was so lucky to find an intact paper-made passport. I think it must be a special paper. Whatever passport was, they found among all these billions of tons of, of, of ashes, they were able to find the passport. I mean, that's seriously. I think at that point, mind control has been already successful because if the average American person believed this crap, we've been taken over. That's a fact, in my opinion. <laughs> You know, I mean, that, seriously. That's very true. Anyway. That's very true, Luca. Let me just one second we'll give a little break here. Just a second. I'm, I'm not going to play any um, commercial today. I'm going to just say over the phone, I mean, over the, over the microphone. Guys, as you can hear this information, this is not the average information any commercial station would allow. And I tell you, I, I was trying to bring this information. Of course, we have it on the Internet, on my YouTube channel and my Spreaker channel, whatever. But if I go to another station, every average radio station, they would say, you know what, just stay away. We don't even want to talk to you. So first of all, I would say, please, if you're listening to K-Talks in the tri-state area, mm, support their sponsors. Because this information, I don't know how long it's going to last. Uh, this radio station needs your support. And also, you know, me as an independent producer, this is my show. I, I don't even go to the station. I give it to them, but also I take care of this myself. As you know, I'm under attack myself. I don't know if it's a coincidence, but I tell you, Kenny, I start to believe really that uh, you mentioned something at the beginning, you know. They try to come after you. First of all, they try to economically uh, attack you in every way they can. I see it. I mean, i give you an example. Uh, I have my Zana Coffee on Amazon, okay? Guess what? I had 10 reviews from different customers, all five stars, guess what? Amazon removed nine out of ten. No explanations. Then my rankings in Amazon, really hard to find my coffee. And I can tell you the same story on eBay. I can tell you other strange things happening. I mean, we are under attack. I believe it. They have algorithms. I don't even think it's going to be just a man behind. could be a man, but I think most is going to be AI. And when they smell that you don't fit their profile, you're against their agenda, guess what? They will try, especially in the digital world, to control you, to penalize you, to make you really uh, difficult. I tell you, I've been banned on many different things. Or I put things on Facebook, banned, banned for 30 days. I cannot sell some stuff. Or they have a hard time to sell things on eBay. Uh, that's fine. I keep doing what I have to do. I don't stop. That's why I always create new ideas, new products, because I think that's the only way we can fight back. I need to diversify. But meanwhile, ask for your help. If you appreciate what I'm doing, you don't need to be rich. You don't need to even buy my coffee. With 99 cents, wherever you are around the world, you can go to www.zanna.us and you can download any of my songs. You can download my e-books. And everything you see, I do. So that's the way, in my opinion, if you want to support the show, you can do it. Of course, if you go to com, you can buy my coffee directly. And I appreciate it. And we can say screw Amazon because it's really becoming, like my opinion, the global mafia of the market. By the way, it's destroying all the small businesses. I don't know if you're familiar with that, uh, Kenny, but Amazon it is exactly the typical example of uh, government and, um, let's say, corporation collusions, at least uh, fusion. because uh, And people say, oh, this is a private business. Yeah, wait a second, it's true. But they have uh, benefits from the government that you, small business, you don't have. I am all for capitalism, free market capitalism. But when you have a big corporation, they pretty much can have free shipping. Because Trump, he was trying to expose it. They have a super deal that no other small business like us we can have, so they can ship for free. And by the way, when it's free, it means that we taxpayer pay for part of the shipping. And that's just a little part. So right there you have what is sort of, you know, let's say fusion, 
Uh, after all, Mussolini called corporatism, you know, it's, it's exactly the fusion between uh, the corporations and the government and becomes fascism and then destroying all the competition. So that's what pretty much Amazon is becoming. So you can, if you want to support the show, I appreciate it. Go to Zana.us. And by the way, Kenny, you know, you're one of my drinker, you're one of my people who, who support the show and bought my coffee. Give me honest feedback about my Zana coffee. You know, I don't, I'm not going to get mad if you don't like it, but you bought it a few times, so go ahead. Oh, no. Look, my wife orders that, and we, and we love the coffee. And she, she gets a kick out of putting a the bag there because some of them has got the gun on it and stuff like that. So she gets a cab. But it's very it's very good coffee. And anytime I can do it to help somebody support, you know, the your cause, I'm, I'm more than happy to, to tell people. Thank you. And, it's and very I, good. And on top, you know, if you're already people drinking our coffee there, you know, listen. This is organic coffee. There are three, four different blends. And as I said, different from the government that they go out there and they, they don't ask for you for money. They just get them with a gun in front of your face. You don't pay your tax and you will be eventually shot. You lose your home. And if you resist, you will die. Guess what? This is exactly the opposite. We are for free market. We always offer your product, a service that hopefully you like. If you like it, it means that's the way I'm going to be in business. So I appreciate it. Now, back to us. President Trump. Uh, you know, we talked a few times, me and you, questioning about uh, really where President Trump was standing. And, and I like that. You know, we have an open mind. We, we're not followers or anybody. We pray for the best, but also we have an open mind. And, you know, I had a lot of things I was uh, very concerned when I saw President Trump completely changing his position, especially on very important issues like uh, Syria. You know, you say, oh, we're never going to go to Syria. And guess what? Then he started to bomb uh, Syria just because there was a false report or whatever about allegedly somebody using, uh, I mean, according to the report, you know, the president of Syria, Assad, was gassing his own people. The body we know is, is completely false, but still. So I was worried about that. And many other things, of course, Trump make me uh, really freaked out when it came down to the facts that, hey, let's take the guns first and then we go to a judge or to due process. That was wrong. But then at the same time, I see right. some, some issue that is really not changing position and is getting so much uh, hardship, not just uh, as a president, but also as a, as a man. As a family man, all his family, I mean, the violence, the, 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 the agenda, the media, all these actors, all these, like a gang stalking organization to try to destroy him. Just because Trump, President Trump is saying, I want to defend our national sovereignty. Nobody is allowed to come through these borders unless they go through the port of entry like every legal immigrant should do. Because the moment that we have open borders, we have no more a nation. I stand behind this 100%. And I tell you, that's what made me somehow wonder. Maybe it's truly, even with his imperfection, or at least, you know, sometimes you realize that he's just a man surrounded by hundreds of people, that they're all part of a former administration, never really live, what you call the deep state. He has some core values that he's trying to really enforce. What do you think, Kenny? What is your opinion now about President Trump after almost two years after it? You know what, Luca, I was all for Trump, but then again, you would go back to both for less two evil. Mm -hmm. I sure didn't want Hillary Clinton, and, I, and I've become to the point where now, almost now, even with Trump, that, uh, you know, he's talking about Jeff Sessions, the Department of Justice, he can't do anything about it. Why don't he walk over, de declassify all, he's got the power to do it, declassify all those documents, because mm -hmm. there ain't nothing about our national security. Yeah. They're hiding the things that they've done that they know that they could go to prison for. It. So why don't he walk over with the military and say, give me the papers, I'll declassify it. Give them to me right now. I agree. Instead of going to Congress, goes up, or, oh, we give you a week. Oh, then that week goes up. Oh, now we're going to do this. We'll give you another week. And now, it's been going on for a year and a half, and we still don't have it. And people think things end well when your government goes this way. Go back and look at Germany. Look at Russia. And look at China. How many millions of people died in each one of those countries when their government went just like ours is headed right now? I completely agree with you. There are some things he could do. My only point is don't forget. And I'm trying to be fair with the both sides. But at the same time, I have no... I mean, you chose to be the president. You knew all the risk. Or maybe you didn't know everything. But the reality is, you could go out like uh, 
JFK, the last speech about secret society and all this conspiracy, and then he does this executive order to try to repeal the Fed, private Federal Reserve, and guess what? Two weeks later, he was shot in the head. Um, he has uh, family members. Well, you, know, you know, Luke, a lot of people probably don't even know it. John F. Kennedy started printing the Federal Reserve, real Federal Reserve money, not the not this funny re the reserve that we got. It's a fiat dollar. Yeah. It's not backed by anything. It's not backed with silver. It's not backed for gold. And when you get through it, the Monopoly game, they can fold up the board and exactly what you've got is what you've got. Exactly. We, we really own nothing. It's even our property. Uh, you know, you own it until you don't pay the taxes and the, then somebody else owns it. At least that we, I've been talking about this since probably my first show. One of the things that really must shock me as, as an American will real, learn the reality that we have a, contra a cartel of private banks called uh, put together in 1913 under the Federal Reserve Act that is not in federal. They are private corporation. You can find out that. And out of the blue, because a, a corrupted government, a corrupted president, President Wilson at the time, signed this document. By the way, it was in the middle of Christmas night. There was not even everybody in Congress. It was just a very fraudulent act. The point is, now this cartel of banks have the power to create money, currency, not anymore even paper, now it's digital, out of thin air. Like me and you together, say, okay, we're here, we got a computer, create one trillion dollars. Just put a number. We have one trillion dollars now available. Guess what? U.S. government, U.S. Treasury, you need a trillion dollars? No problem. We give it to you, then you have it. But now you need to pay us back the interest. Wait a second. Why our government cannot create out of thin air the same trillion dollars? Forget about even the Constitution for a second with the dollar. I mean, every currency is supposed to be backed by silver and gold. We don't even go there. Let's just go this little hocus pocus magic trick. Why don't we do it? Why do we have to let it do a, 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 a pack of rats called private bankers that they, they do that and then they charge us the interest? And by the way, you know this interest where they are real money when we pay them back. Because even the real money that we have to pay back, but more important, the interest they are paid mostly by our income tax. That's and that's how they enslave us. So the point is, yeah, well, all all your income tax, not one dime of it goes to anything but paying off our debt. Exactly. Debt they, they charge us the one and a half percent. Exactly. People better wake up. This now they're stealing your. They're actually stealing your labor because. You're, you're getting paid in the fiat dollar. Exactly. So they're, they're already stealing our labor. They'll let you get fat and sassy as long as you don't say too much about them. Yeah. Yeah, my point is exactly this. What about President Trump? You know, what maybe really was, uh, uh, you know, he you knows some of the truth now. He's trying to do what he can. And I'm not getting, giving him any slack. I mean, the reality, he has a wife, he has a few children, sons, daughters. And all that to say, by the way, Mr. Trump, you can play around with few things, but don't touch some things. Because I really believe, as you said, you would have the opportunity to, no matter Congress, let's look at the, de the documents, for example, of the declassification from the CIA the documents about JFK. That was, they were due. President Trump first promised that he was going to release them. And then guess what? A week later, change of heart. Why? Because I really believe it. they give him another video, grassy you know, say, you're next. Maybe your daughter is next. I, I'm just guessing. And I'll tell you something. I don't know what I would have done if I were him. But i tell you one thing, though. There is a moment that your life, the life of people around you, may be important. But if you look at the big picture, we're all going to die no matter what. And when you know that you have that power, that you could create a sparkle to finally get, hopefully, out there, enough knowledge to the rest of the nation to say this nation has been occupied. JFK tried to give us the warning. Maybe Trump has a different way to communicate with a more direct language. If I were him, if I knew the truth that I knew, I would say at this point, guys, you know, this may be my last speech. They may try to kill him. You better lock and, lock and load. And these are the names. These are the people that are doing this to our nation. And guess what? I cannot do much because I've been completely surrounded by people that they completely try to tie my hands. That's what I would do. And at least I would try. But at the same time, I think they truly somehow fear him on some levels when he's about to defeat the globalism, especially the European 
globe, uh, you know, nations they're like the Germany, the France, and the Canadians, you know, they, they completely follow the New World Order plan. What do you think? Yeah, I, I think I think we're headed right the same way Germany and all of them are doing over there. You know, the, the, they come in from all over the world, and they come in and they rape the women. They say, well, we can't do anything because that, that's their religious beliefs in, uh, in their country. The, especially the, the young boys. They, oh, they like young boys. I don't care what they like. They're, you're living in our country now, and you, we don't do that here. So I, it's really uh, it's, it's upsetting. I, I think somebody said Merkel's going to buy a bracelet for the women and says, please don't rape me. I got a better idea. How about wearing a bracelet that says, if you try to rape me, I'm going to shoot you. But no, they can't have guns over there. I forgot about that. Yeah. Now, speaking about guns, something very disturbing about England that we already know, but sometimes it's still more hard to figure it out. I mean, there was a magistrate uh, in his own home uh, just a few days ago, just outside London. Uh, there were a few people, uh, at least four or five uh, inv home invaders, armed with uh, knives, one even with gun. And uh, they tried to attack uh, this man. By the way, he's an elderly man. He's in his mid-70s. And he had a couple of sons with him. They tried to attack his family. Uh, the man fight back. And guess what? Him and his son, they, they, they able successfully to, to incapacitate one of the attackers. The attacker, of course, called 911, the equivalent of 911. And uh, he's saying, I've been attacked. And more important, somebody is calling me a racist name. The police comes. Uh, arrest the magistrate, the person that was, uh, you know, in his own home, defending his family, and guess what? They release everybody else, and these people, they were carrying weapons on top. You know, if you have even a slingshot in England, you're going to be arrested. But think about it. Uh, they were also carrying guns, and they arrest the man for hate crime. Because maybe, maybe... I don't even know for sure. This is this point is only the word of the criminal. Uh, he used the word, some word that could be, you know, considered hate crime. Maybe this guy, uh, I don't know the nationality of these people. Maybe they were Muslim. Maybe they were Arab. Maybe they were black. I have no idea. All I know that they were gang members armed, breaking into somebody's home. And this is real news, by the way. You can find that. Uh, you can, you know, just Google it out. So this is the reality of England, and this is exactly the brainwashing that they are using against humanity. That's their plan, to castrate us physically and also mentally and psychologically against any type of crimes. At this point, we're going to just be there, sitting there and being slaughtered. That's what I believe. Uh, Kenny, I want to give you the floor. We have the last minute. Whatever you want to say. Well, the only thing I'd like to say, Luke, is because, you know, the, I'm all about the target individuals. A lot of people don't want to believe it. Just go Google up Ted Gunderson. And there's there's plenty plenty of of videos out there with him talking about this, and he was a friend of mine. I met him personally. I considered him a very good friend. I even, you know, they stole all his retirement stuff from him too. So they they put him in a big bind. So when he got when he died, I think he died flat broke. Cause he asked me to send him some money to wow. to try and get to Oklahoma. He thought they could save his life. Luke. Oh my God! I'm sorry, but I didn't know that. Wow. So even his retirement, they got after him. I couldn't believe it. Yes. Wow. Wow. Listen, Kenny, I, I thank you very much, as usually, to share whatever information you have, especially about, as you said, target individuals and also to have your opinion. Uh, my best to you and your lady and your family, okay? And let's be in touch. And thank you, Lucas. Same here. Thank you, my and friend. And all, all the listeners, I hope, I hope this ends well. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.